tensions reached an all-time high back on May 4th, 2020, when a fight broke out between defendant Zach Latham and the Durham family. During that altercation, Latham stabbed his 51-year-old neighbor multiple times, ultimately causing his death. Now he's being tried for the crime of manslaughter. But the question for the jury here is whether or not this homicide was justified. It could potentially be legally justified if the jury finds that Zachary Latham was validly defending himself. Something else interesting about this, the whole incident was captured on camera. We're gonna show it to you now. We wanna warn you before we play it for you, it is very, very graphic. Get the kiddos out of the room and then we're gonna talk about it on the other side. Dreadful, isn't it? Let me bring back in my guests and talk more about this. In Magnolia, Texas, legendary homicide detective Phil Waters. And in Chicago, Illinois, criminal defense attorney and the host of the Defense Diaries podcast, Bob Mata II. So we were talking before the break about who filmed this piece of video. And I have to thank our control room for telling me. I was unaware, and I think a lot of our viewing audience may be unaware. It was a defendant's wife who filmed this. And it's also my understanding she's on the state's witness list. Uh, she's going to be called by them to talk about filming it. Why? Why was she filming it? You know, we know the prosecution is coming out and saying this Zachary Latham was trying to be a TikTok star, that he's filming his neighbors, he's acting up, disrupting the peace, being socially unacceptable, all of it, because he wanted to be TikTok famous. And the more he did it, the more likes he got on TikTok. Now, why his wife was filming it, not so sure. But let's talk about how this could cut both ways for the state and for the defense. Bob Mata, I want to go to you first on this because you brought up the point about the filming. What do you think, please? I, I think that it's very interesting in terms of, because look, with self-defense, we're not talking about his intent. They went with, or I'm sorry, with manslaughter. You know, the, it's a heat of the moment type thing. So they decided to go with the lesser charge as opposed to, you know, intentional homicide, so which, which is easier for them. But in terms of self-defense, they still have to try to get into the mind of Zach Latham because they need to determine whether or not it was reasonable in his mind to think that this guy or these two guys were actually going to cause serious bodily harm or death. And it had his actions, his response to them had to be reasonable within that mind frame. So then... When you factor in this video, where we know for a fact that this kid had about 40,000 followers on TikTok, that this was an ongoing saga, that he was continuing to post these videos, it's all part of why these neighbors are over here. It's not just the driving of the cars in front of the house and revving the engines, it's the fact that he's posting everything online, he's invading their privacy in terms of their lives, and, and he's turning it into a spectacle, which, ultimately leads to this. So the question then becomes for me, if I'm if I'm the defense, is that a concern for me that the wife is filming the entire time? 
because to me that would indicate, look, Zach said, I need you to film this. This is going down here. They're coming. And then when you're watching this video, she's sitting there screaming <laughs> and still filming it instead of calling 911. To me, it's it's inexplicable. And it, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out with the jury because I, I just cannot understand why she kept filming. You know, when you see this, this portion of the video where uh, Mr. Durham Ashley, he's got blood all over him. He's still upright. He's still walking. He starts walking out of the garage and then decides to turn back and go back in. So I, I, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of questions with the video for me as far as how it's going to interplay with the, the affirmative defense of self-defense. And we'll see how it plays out. But it's interesting, to say the least. It sure is. I feel like this could just go either way because, you know, is she filming just because, you know, she wants to have the what she said to the neighbors recorded, you know, who knows? Or is it for a more sinister reason? Is it for this motivation that the state says exists for her husband to be TikTok famous? I, I, I want to play a clip before I go to you, Detective Waters, for you to take a look at. This is where uh, Gage Durham, uh, who is, is the the decedent's son, uh, first witness for the state, is talking about why they didn't leave the property when they were asked repeatedly, you know, by the wife, the woman filming, and uh, the defendant to do that. Whose truck is this? That's my dad's. You've now been told at least two additional times to back up. You were just told again to leave the property, right? Yeah. And again. You testified on direct. Your dad kind of motioned towards towards Billy and said, you got me, right? Yeah. And at this time, it was your understanding that Billy was going to be physically confronting Zach. I could assume. At your father's direction? Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. And is this your father's hand, your father walking alongside? Yeah. You knew you were not allowed on that property, right? Yes. It was a private residence and you were not welcome there? Yes. Your father knew that he was not welcome there and he had been asked to leave? Yes. Billy knew he was not welcome there and he had been asked to leave? Yes. And. As you've already testified, Billy was there with your father with the purpose of physically confronting Zach. Once we arrived, yeah. At some point after that footage ended, your brother came up and made sort of a gesture like he was going to be punching just Zach, right? Yeah. And it was at that time that Zach swung the, the knife or taser. Yeah and he did not make contact with your brother? No. And at that point, your dad charged Zach and continued far back into the garage? Yeah. And you and Billy joined in this physical confrontation? Yeah, as well as Moses and Dylan. You threw punches? Mm -hmm. You've already testified that you, you got it verbally in response so that it records, just so you know. Okay. So you, you threw punches? Yes. You already testified that you at least on one occasion kicked uh, Zach? Yes. You, in fact, even stomped on Zach at, at some points? Yes. Um, your father at one point had Zach in a chokehold? Yeah. Your father started to exit the garage at one point and then turned around and joined back in the attack, right? Yes, because Billy was in a headlock by Moses. Um, and still... You didn't leave the property? No. Okay, again, that was, of course, from the cross, as we can see. Uh, so, you know, not leaving somebody's property when you don't have permission to be on there, uh, that's a trespass. That's minor. This whole thing could have been so minor. Maybe not even made it into the court system. Uh, but yet, here we are. We have a man dead in a fight in which nobody has won. Let me bring back in my guest, Detective Phil Waters and Attorney Bob Mata. Uh, Detective Phil, let me pick your brain about this. Uh, the fact that the defendant's wife is the one filming this video um, definitely 
part of this because she is saying no permission here. You don't have permission, leave the property. She's saying it over and over again. Um, but at no point does she stop and call police. What do you think hearing these facts? Well, I think that she her purpose was to document what was happening. I don't know if the ulterior motive of a TikTok future TikTok post was part of the formula, but my sense is is that that's what she that's what her purpose was in in videoing what happened. As she continues on, you know, people do strange things in given situations and she may have been so caught up in what was happening and what she was witnessing that her her reflex was just to continue to video rather than get on the phone and call 911. So I, I can understand why she did not go to the 911 route because she was caught up in that moment of documenting what was happening. Now, if this was a state's witness, well, I, I tell you, just, just looking at this in isolation, they just presented the defense for Zach. And it'll be interesting to see what, what, comes, what the outcome is in this, uh, in this trial. Mm. Yeah, well, and that, that's a great point. Um, and we're going to be exploring this a little more because what kind of a witness is she going to be, right? You both know that, you know, either side can, you know, call any witness, you know, they want in this, in this case, but whether they're going to be cooperative, helpful, or, you know, hostile, uh, that is uh, to be seen.